So yes, those of you, you might not want to be on the edge there, just behind you is where Key Corner is. <laughs> so straight ahead of you, you can see Waghorn's Butchers, a fine establishment if you like a sausage, uh, but also known for paranormal activity. Two of its previous owners have separately talked of the things that they have found there, including poltergeist activity. So their storeroom, both of them on separate occasions, was emptied out and laid in a pile on the floor. Uh, they also heard a deep sighing noise. Uh, and it might have sounded something like this. Anyone got a good example of a deep sigh? Or maybe I can hear an example from all of you. Mm. It's just, what kind of sigh do you think they heard? <laughs> After the count of three, so no one feels silly. <laughs> one, two, three. Mm. Oh, oh so good. <laughs> oh, I bet it was something like that. So they heard a deep sigh. Um, and uh, not just these two owners, but the workers, different workers in the butchers as well. A shadowy figure was seen in the top room and a whispering and this deep sighing. All together now? <sighs> yes, just like that. Um, getting very good at that. Uh, um, now, just over here, those of you who might need to step back a bit if you can't see past the war memorial, is Idsal House, a rather lovely house, hard to tell in the darkness. Um, but here, some workmen experienced being pushed suddenly from behind, but there was nobody there. Like, literally pushed, falling forward, no one behind them. Uh, now, they're not the only workmen on our tour to experience things. In fact, if you go around the country, there are a lot of ghost tales told by workmen. Perhaps because they are uh, stirring up things in the house, making changes. Uh, perhaps because they're there, um, you know, in different spaces in the house that other people haven't been in. For whatever reason, there are an awful lot of stories involving workmen. Uh, it seems that it's you know, not just a danger hammering a nail into your thumb by accident. Uh, also in that house, you can see the lit windows up above. There was one resident who refused to go up to those rooms because, in her own words, because of the apparition. So that ghost had the complete run of the top of the house. Perhaps that's all it wanted. Mm. <laughs> now, just this road running between the butchers and Idsal House, we've got Southern Roads coming down here. Um, you think, oh, just a road, what could possibly happen here? Well, along this road, a young uh, school teacher was driving just a bit out of town, when in the fields to the side of the road, she saw a procession, a funeral procession, very definitely a funeral procession. There was a coffin on a carriage. And I say a carriage because it was Victorian. People were all in black, in Victorian garb, black horses. She stopped the car and got out to investigate. By the time she got into the field, there was no sight of them anywhere, and there was nowhere that they could have gone. Um, this is not as bizarre as it sounds, a procession going across the field, because funeral processions in Victorian times, like they had for many centuries before, often took unusual routes, the idea being that you didn't want the living and the dead to meet. But unfortunately, as we'll find out on this tour, that seems to happen. Uh, now I want to introduce the first part of a story that I'm going to tell you in a few different parts throughout our walk. Um, and this is a story that you, if any of you are interested, you can find in a book called Strange Tales of a Cotswold Town. I don't know if any of you have ever heard it or read it. Uh, written by a chap called Dennis Sissons. Um, he's still alive today, but he's over 90 years old. We actually, we, we thought that he would have uh, probably died, but we wanted to get in touch with him just to talk to him about this story. We, can't, we weren't really expecting to hear anything back. 
But we did hear, uh, in just a few days, we heard from the nursing room, nursing home where he was staying. And he actually sent us a message saying that he was very pleased that we were interested in the story. And he was very glad this local folklore was being sort of preserved, saved, passed on. Um, Dennis Sisson's had a very interesting life. He was in the RAF. He was a salesman for various companies. But he was fascinated with the history of the Cotswolds. Um, and he really took it upon himself to thoroughly research uh, all of the folk tales that he heard. And he had a special talent for getting the information out of people and making connections. Uh, so there was uh, a particular thing happened in the locality that set him off wondering about a place called Fiddler's Hill. Fiddler's Hill. Now, where did it get that name from and what could be the story behind it? He asked many people in the local history club what was there about Fiddler's Hill. And there was nothing, absolutely nothing. They said that there was nothing at all. He said, was it a Stone Age barrow? And they said, there's no evidence of that. There's no information. You're, you're chasing a dead end. But eventually, he did find someone. Perhaps it helped that it was, he was married to a cousin of his uh, that said that he knew someone with a story to tell who knew of the provenance of Fiddler's Hill. And so he arranged to meet him at the Goat and Compasses in Leckhampton. His, that man's name was Daniel Burkwa. Now, when he arrived at the pub, he had a, Dennis had some last minute jitters thinking, it could just be anyone who's going to charge me money for a ridiculous tale. But he decided to wait it out. And a, a very gentlemanly man, perhaps 60 age or so, came in and uh, uh, was smoking a pipe. Dennis didn't like smoking, but he, he let this man off just this once. Uh, because this was the man, Daniel Furqua, with a story to tell. And Dennis asked him, why are you the only man I found that has any information about Fiddler's Hill? And Daniel Furqua said, well, perhaps people feel that my version is the best. Uh, perhaps it's the one that rings truest. Don't take it completely to heart. Many people feel that this is just a story, a fantasy and there is nothing more to it than that. Dennis said, well, don't worry. You tell me everything you know. And then he proceeded to tell him the story of how Phyllis Hill got its name, which we'll hear about later. <laughs> All right. Okay, come on, my...